Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum and today we'll be looking at the histology of the muscle tissue. So we'll be looking at the histological features of the muscle tissue. Remember that I told us that the muscle tissue is one of the tissues in the body. We have the epithelial tissue, the connective tissue, the nervous tissue and also the muscle tissue. So we'll be looking at the histological features of the muscle tissue. The muscle tissue is defined as the tissue that is responsible for the movement and shape of the different parts of the body. So this tissue shortens in length in order to contract, thereby producing movement. So this is what the muscle tissue does, movement and the shape. So that is it. Then the cells of the muscle tissues are generally called the myocytes. They are the cells of the muscle tissues. We have three types of muscle tissue in the body. They are classified depending on their location and also their characteristics. So these three types or three class of muscle tissue are classified based on their location and based on their features or their characteristics. We have the skeletal muscle. The skeletal muscle is the type of muscle that is found in the external part of the body or the place or the area that is close to the external like the inner canal we have the cardiac muscle the cardiac muscle is found in the heart it is the muscle of the heart and we have the smooth muscle the smooth muscle is the muscle that is found in visceral organs or in internal organs so these three class or three types of muscle tissue may have their different features or different characteristics however there is something that they all have in common which is contraction the three of them have the ability to contract and that is a result of the presence of myofilaments the three of them contain myofilaments and it is this myofilament that helps it or the myofilament is the contractile unit of this muscle tissue and the myofilaments are the thin actin filament and the thick myosin filament. We'll be looking at that in the skeletal muscle tissue. So the cells of the muscle tissue, like I told us before, are called the myocytes. The cells of the muscle tissue are called the myocytes. Then let's look at these three types of muscle tissue, one after the other, starting from the skeletal muscle tissue. The skeletal muscle tissue, like I told us, is the type of muscle tissue that is found in the external or the exterior part of the body or the area close to the external. And one unique thing about this muscle tissue is that they are multinucleated. What do I mean by multinucleated? It means that they contain more than one nucleus in their cytoplasm and their nucleus are placed peripherally. They are placed peripherally in the cytoplasm and the cytoplasm of the skeletal muscle is called the sarcoplasm. This cytoplasm lies adjacent to the, to the plasma membrane or to the cell membrane. The cell membrane of the skeletal muscle tissue is called the sarcolemma. Having seen the multinucleated nucleus, another important feature in the skeletal muscle tissue is the presence of striation now a skeletal muscle cell or skeletal muscle fiber when placed under an electron microscope you see the presence of striations there you see lines striations there and these striations are covered by connective tissue this is it now if you bring a single muscle fiber you notice that an individual muscle fiber is covered by the endomysium and a collection of muscle fibers single muscle fibers came together to form bundle or fascicle and this bundle or fascicle are covered by the perimysium then a collection of the bundle or collection of the fascicle came together to form the whole muscle and they are covered by the epimysium. 
So you can see that the striation of the skeletal muscle is covered by connective tissue, which is the endomycium, the perimycium, and the epimycium. Then, if you place a single muscle fiber under a microscope, another important thing that you will see, you notice that there are, there are presence of individual longitudinal myofibrils. A single or an individual muscle fiber contains in it a lot of myofibrils, individual myofibrils. It is these myofibrils that came together to form a single muscle fiber. And these myofibrils we are formed as a result of some cells of the skeletal muscle fiber coming together. Some cells known as the myoblasts came together to form these myofibrils. And a collection of myofibrils gave rise to a single muscle fiber. And collection of single muscle fibers came together and they are from a bundle or fascicle, which are covered by the perimysium. Collection of bundle or fascicle came together to form the to form the whole muscle, which is covered by the epimysium. Then another important feature in this skeletal muscle is the presence of myofilaments. The skeletal muscle contains myofilaments, and the myofilaments in the skeletal muscle is the thin actin filament and the thick myosin filament. The thin actin filament lies in a zone known as the eye, eye zone or the eye band and the thick myosin filament lie in a dark zone or a dark band known as the A band. Then in the eye band you notice a line crossing the eye band and that line is known as the Z disc or the Z band. Then when you come to the A band you notice that there is a darker zone in the A band which is known as the H zone and that H zone also contains another line that crosses it and that line is known as the is known as the M band so these actin and myosin filaments are called the myofilaments and they are the contractile units of the skeletal muscle fiber or they are the contractile unit of the muscle tissue now from one uh, Z disc to another Z disc from the sarcomere, from one Z disc to another Z disc from the sarcomere. Remember, the Z disc is formed or is a line that crosses the uh, the eye band, which is the light band. From one Z disc to another Z disc is known as the sarcomere. So these are the contractile units of the muscle tissue. Then moving on. The skeletal muscle tissue is voluntary in action. This is to say that you can decide whether to move it or not to move it. So that is another important feature in it. Then another one is that it is innervated by motor nerve fibers. The innervation of the skeletal muscle is by motor nerve fibers. Then the length of the skeletal muscle, if you notice across the length of the skeletal muscle, it is dependent on the area that the muscle is found. The length of the skeletal muscle is dependent on the area it is found and the, the muscle fibers are long, longitudinally placed and they are they run parallel on its own. So that is it for the skeletal muscle fiber. So let's go over to the cardiac muscle. Let's see the cardiac muscle. Like I told us earlier, the cardiac muscle is the it is the muscle tissue that is found in the heart. And the cardiac muscle has some similarities with the skeletal muscle and they have variations. Like I told us, these muscles are, they are classified based on their location and based on their specific characteristics. So you can see it has some similarities with the skeletal muscle and it also have differences from the skeletal muscle. So the similarities, number one is that it has the presence of striation. You notice that the cardiac muscle is striated, and that is one uh, important feature in the cardiac muscle. And the second one is that the presence of myofilaments. The cardiac muscle contains the thin actin filament and the thick myosin filament. 
These are the similarities. And this thin and thick myosin filament are the contractile units of the cardiac muscle. When we go over to the differences, you notice that the first difference is the, that, the, uh, that it has with the skeletal muscle is that it is mononucleated. It is mononucleated. That is to say that it contains only one nucleus. And unlike the skeletal muscle that is multinucleated and, and the nucleus are placed at the periphery, the cardiac muscle is mononucleated and the nucleus is placed at the center of the cytoplasm. That is the first difference. Then the second one there is the is the presence of a, you know the fibers, muscle fibers of the cardiac muscle. The they move in a parallel orientation, but they do not move parallelly all through. They rather move parallel, they join or they branch together or anastomose together and continue, join and continue, join and continue. So that is the way the fibers are oriented. It, it runs parallel, you join together and branch again. So that is how it, it moves, unlike the, the skeletal muscle that is fiber is parallelly uh, longitudinal, moves parallel all through on its own. Then you notice that the cells of the cardiac muscle are called cardiac monocytes. Also, the, there is presence of intercalated disc in the cardiac muscle, in the cells of the cardiac muscle. There is what we call the intercalated disc. And the intercalated disc contains the desmosome, it contains the gap junction and it contains the tight junction. So desmosome provides a strong intercellular adhesion between cells, between the myofilaments of cells. This is what we mean by this. Myofilaments are responsible for contraction, right? So myofilament of one cell and myofilament of another cell in the cardiac muscle, when they, when during contraction, it is the desmosome that provides a strong intercellular adhesion eh, so that these myofilaments will come together to do their work. So it provides a strong intercellular adhesion. Then another thing that the intercalated disc contains is the, the gap junction. You notice that the gap junction is responsible for the ionic continuity between cells. The exchange of ions between cells, it is the work of the gap junction. The tight junction, the actin filaments ends in relation to the tight junction. The innervation is autonomic fibers, unlike the skeletal muscle that is the motor fibers. Then the cardiac muscle is involuntary in action. That is to say that you cannot control its action. So that is it for the cardiac muscle. Then we have the smooth muscle. Let's look at the smooth muscles. So the smooth muscle are the type of muscle that are found in the visceral or internal organs. The smooth muscle does not contain striation, so they do not have striation. And another important feature in the smooth muscle is that the smooth muscle they they are slow and steady. It contracts weakly slow and steady, unlike the skeletal muscle that contracts once and stop. So smooth muscle have a steady contraction, unlike the skeletal muscle. And the smooth muscle is mononucleated, that is to say that it has only one nucleus that is found in the cytoplasm. And then another important feature in the smooth muscle is that the smooth muscle have the presence of caviolas on its uh, surfaces. And also, the smooth muscle is involuntary in action. So it has this fissure together with the cardiac muscle. The both of them are involuntary in action. That is to say that you cannot control its actions. And also, the smooth muscle is innervated by the autonomic fibers. They are innervated by the autonomic fibers. So these are the important features of the smooth muscle. And also, it tells in the Synthesis and production of the fibroblast, uh, elastic, and collagen. So that is uh, the important features in the smooth muscles. So we've come to the end of these teachings. 
please try as much as possible to subscribe to my youtube channel learn with you some greats like this video share this video to your friends thank you very much